Crabbers from across the country making their way to Summers Point for the largest crabbing tournament in America. What a great day to be down the shore. It surely is. Our Victoria Woodle is in Summers Point chilling along the Great Egg Harbor Bay. Victoria. <laughs> My first memory about crabbing was going out on a boat with my Uncle Jerry and my cousins. We went out in a rickety old boat. Uh, the motor took a few times to start up, but uh, once we got out on the water and we anchored up and we started catching those crabs and they started coming on board, just the whole process was very fascinating to me, very exciting. Yeah, really my, my dad, I guess, got me started with it. Um, you know, just going down to the beach as a kid and um, bought me a fishing pole and I used to love to just go down to the pier and just just wait to catch a fish and catch a little sea bass or a little snapper blue and I, I just loved it. And uh, when I uh, moved back to the area I got myself a boat and decided I wanted to be out on the water as much as possible. Yeah, I bounced around a little bit, lived in Pittsburgh for a while up in Quakertown and then I moved to Egg Harbor Township um, and really moved into Egg Harbor Township to be closer to the Pat Gone Creek. It's full of crabs and fish and, and birds and all sorts of wildlife and it's just a just a, an outstanding place to be. The place where Ron and I met um, was a, a crabbing forum where all the, the crabbing nerds like us get together and we, we share our stories of crabbing and reports of where we crab and good spots. Somewhere a few years after that, Ron started popping up and... We said, hey, let's get together, let's pick a body of water and let's go crabbing and, and all on the same day. And then, uh, then he started talking about you know, let's try and get a few guys together and we'll see who can catch the biggest crab for fun and we'll all head out. All crab on, on his creek, the Pacon Creek, and uh, you know, a couple guys joined in on the conversation and the first time I met him was actually on the creek. As I said, there were only a handful of us. I think there was three other boats other than, than mine and his down here and uh, we all just came down. We met at, uh, at one of the ramps, and you know, Ron had driven his boat up to the ramp. A couple of guys just put in the boats at the ramp. And we met there, and then we all kind of crabbed in the general area. We did good. We caught a bunch of crabs, and then everybody got in their trucks, loaded up their boats, and went home. We had a great time out on the water, a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And we took pictures of it, and we put it out on the internet and on social media. And then, of course, after that, then we got back and we were all in the forum again talking about what a great time we had. And now there was more and more interest. Suddenly we started receiving all these requests from people saying, hey, that looked like a lot of fun. You know, where was my invite? When can I get, in, you know, how, do, how can I get involved? And that's how it all started back in 2010. And now it's like, hey, this is kind of a, a neat thing. It's, a, it's not just crabbing, it's a crabbing and a, and a party. You know, we had a lot more interest to, to, for the second year. The only thing that happened with the second year, we wound up with uh, record-breaking heat. It was over 100 degrees before 9 o'clock that morning, and uh, the humidity was hovering around 100% as well, and people stayed away for, for, for health concerns. So we only wound up with three boats on the water. It was mine, um, Ron's, and one other guy. And that was it. It was just, you know, three boats. And then after we were done crabbing, Ron's like, hey, you guys want to come over to the house and we'll steam up the crabs and, you know, just eat them, have a couple beers. And we did that. 
and that grew into I think you know 40 or so people the next year and then doubled after that and in the yard here um, is where the the parties were till it just got to the point where Ron's backyard could no longer handle the party and it grew into the the monster it's become today. Just 24 hours from now, Summers Point becomes the crabbing capital of America. I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. And Ron, tell us just how it started and did you think it was ever going to be like that? Uh, you know, it being the largest crabbing tournament in the country. I couldn't have dreamed that in my wildest dreams. <laughs> Ron asked me to step in what we used to have right here at the, the famous Crab Shack in Summers Point, uh, out here in his backyard, uh, where he would have the after party for the assault on Pat Conk Creek. And he would ask me to stop over and say a few words. And of course, you know, um, with Ron, you, it's kind of tough turning them down. Well, Jack has been great. He's been a great ambassador for the event. I mean, he's actually visited sponsors to talk to them about the event. He visits every sponsor when they come into town. He is waiting at the boat ramp on Friday and Saturday morning to watch the Crabbers launch. He's there to welcome everybody to Summer's Point at the tournament itself. We got nothing, we got nothing, but that's okay, Mayor. We're still winners because we're in Summer's Point. We're in Summer's Point. That's the best place to be during the summer or any time. Uh, he named me the city's harbor master uh, at the event, and he's just been supportive, uh, you know, beyond belief. Someone that has so much of a passion for the environment and for everything about Summer's Point, Ron brings that all to the table. With Ron and all the work that he's done on the waterways, and especially uh, being the forefront behind this little tournament, that Ron Meister, our harbor master. Yeah. yeah! This is one of the best events that we have in all of Summer's Point, so we thank you. We hope you have a great time. We hope you enjoy yourselves. Stop in at Gregory's. That's all I got to say. Stop in at Gregory's. Well, Ron spends a lot of time on the water as the harbor master should, and I saw him on the water a lot because I'm on the water a lot. I'm an avid fisherman and environmentalist, so to speak. I'm authorized to ban the ospreys that live on the Patcon Creek. And uh, we got together and decided maybe we should do something for the town, and he said, I want to expand my tournament. And I said, well, count me in, whatever I can do. Uh, the city puts up signs that, that say, welcome crabbers with the Summers Point logo on them. The fire department puts up a lit sign welcoming the crabbers to town. The, the city of Summers Point's really embraced, you know, the, the largest crabbing tournament in the country taking place here in, here in town. You know, my company makes a, makes a good donation every year. I donate myself and try to find additional sponsors whenever I uh, get the opportunity. Uh, we've done a little solicitation over the years, but for the most part, they, they found us, and it's usually through word of mouth through another sponsor. Uh, for example, Kelchner's came to us after having uh, discussions with a uh, crab spice company that sponsors us, uh, called the J.O. Spice Company out of Maryland. About four years ago, the folks from the James Oslo Company mentioned what a nice gentleman this Ron was and what a wonderful event he had. Started just family friends crabbing coming back to the house and why don't you come down and, and check it out when i went with my daughter and saw the family thing and how much fun it was with my daughter going crabbing i've never gone crabbing before she's a, a doctor of psychology and you know one of us with the hook and the other you know getting the rope and the other yanking it to the trap to close the trap and bring it up it was just fun it was a great day and the entire day she was smiling the whole day, I never saw my daughter smile that 
much in my life. So she really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed it. You know, every year they're they're one of our primary sponsors, and you know, can't can't say enough good things about that company. They've been very supportive of the event over the years. I think it's important for the community here. Um, I think Summers Point's really benefited from it. The uh, Really the whole region here has benefited from the people, not just coming down for that day of crabbing um, and the party, but they're now getting more familiar with this area. You know, you, you bump into people at the Wawa or at a local restaurant that are just in the area for the weekend. Or, you know, they were looking for something to do and instead of going anywhere else in, uh, in New Jersey or Maryland to go crabbing, they're here, they're here in Summers Point. People in this town really love this tournament. And it again, it helps our whole area, not just Summers Point, Atlanta County, Cape May County. It's just a great thing for us. Absolutely, a rising tide floats all boats. And the more people you bring to town, the better you are. And you see a lot of those ugly assault on packed concrete shirts and ugly assault on packed concrete hats all over town the week of the tournament and afterwards. It's, it's a lot of fun here in town. And it's, and it's nice to have a, an event that, that's a fun event. And who doesn't like a free event? We all know about it in Summers Point, but now it's getting the notoriety of all over the eastern part of the states. It is the largest crabbing tournament in the United States. Those people need places to stay. They need to buy gas. They need to buy food. They need to enjoy services locally. And the, you know, so the economic benefit is great, but the idea of it being an, um, just an overall driver and positive, uh, and casting a positive image on the city of Summers Point, you know, outside of the region, you know, you can't really put a value on it. When you come down to our area and you see what it is, you see the great restaurants, you see the pristine waterways that we have, you see everything that's out that we can offer. You can't help but going back to where you live and talking about it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a good core of locals down here, uh, but. You know, a lot of people are coming from, you know, not just New Jersey, but Maryland and... From uh, New York, Pennsylvania, and then over the years, it's expanded to 14 different states, people as far away as Texas, Florida, Louisiana, Georgia, Virginia, Massachusetts, Connecticut, West Virginia. You know, we had somebody coming from Michigan one year. So people come in from all over the country now, and it's it's really uh, a great thing. So it's been a no-brainer to follow behind, and the the way it's adopted by the citizens of Summers Point, accepted by these people, and accepted by all the out-of-town visitors and businesses alike. And I just think it's a no-brainer to support it to the max. carve duck decoys, I carve all kind of different birds and fish and a lot of different things like that. So if it's made out of wood and people want it, I carve it. I'm pretty much what a lot of people would just call an all-around outdoorsman. I like to hunt, I like to fish, I like to crab. I prefer to carve and to paint the images of the birds as I remember them from my mind. I don't want to go on and maybe make an exact replica of what a pintail looks like. I want to capture that image in my mind is what she looked like on the water. My maternal grandparents had a home in Ocean City. So it was right on the corner of 18th and West and my typical summer day was I would be up at dawn, I would be on my bike and I'd either be riding down the 52nd Street um, to go crabbing or to go clamming or to go fishing or I also spent a lot of time around the 12th Street Fishing Pier. So that's how I got to learn the areas around Pacon Creek, um, Steelman Bay, Pex Bay, all around Ocean City. You know, for a long time my kids were in soccer and every Saturday and Sunday my son and my daughter both played and I'd have to decline Ron's invitation to crab and he'd be like, Jody, your priorities are all messed up. <laughs> so, you know, said much uh, tongue in cheek and then finally as they got older and uh, they wanted to crab themselves and he finally said, look, can you make the assault this year, bring the family, come on down, you'll have a good time. 
It's a family event for him. His uh, wife and his children participate. You know, now every year my family just loves it. They look forward to it. So we'll spend two days together as a family. We'll take the kids out of school and we'll crab Friday and Saturday and uh, we just have a good time. Three more crabs in that bucket. Oh, boy, there's a whole myriad of people. I mean, first of all, I have to probably talk about Captain Willie Crab. In fact, I think more people know him as that than by his real name. I went with uh, one of my friend's father when I was about 12 years old, around 1967. I've been just completely uh, enamored with the whole ordeal ever since. And uh, there was a guy that built these traps. They were 12 by 12 by 6. And I bought a couple off of them, and uh, unfortunately, he dropped dead. And I kind of panicked because I didn't, where am I going to get traps? So I just studied them and started building them and I modified them. And I shrunk them down to 10 by 10 by 6. And I started putting weights on the doors, weights on the bottom. And I started using snoods and then I developed the topless traps. I write stories about fishing and crabbing. And I put my Bible verses in it because that's how I think as I'm out there. And I started writing little reports about my adventures. I started out as uh, a Captain Willie, but crabbing, crabs are my first love out there. And so I just started going, signing at Willie Crab. And then everybody started calling me Willie Crab, and I liked it. And I guess it's been about 28 years. And most people you meet on the water really are nice people. I've just noticed that, most of them. I want to say, actually, we met on the creeks behind Fortescue uh, just out of the blue. He was crabbed in a spot, and I came whipping by with my duck boat, which he affectionately calls the hot rod duck boat because I don't know what it does, but it's pretty fast. <laughs> and so I had to slow down to get around this not quite old guy in the ditch and super friendly. He starts talking, hey, what are you doing out here? What's going on? That's a cool boat. I really like it. So he showers you with compliments and then kind of draws you into his world. I'll even buy crabs if I don't have time to go catch them. I'm not afraid to say I'll go buy them. <laughs> so uh, we've been friends now, I guess at least 10 years. We've we fished together. We crab together. We've just had more fun than people deserve to have, I think. You know, he's a, he's a great ambassador for the tournament. Uh, he, he he has great enthusiasm for, for recreational crabbing. Well, I'm very, very blessed. I never dreamed of these days when grandkids would be so much fun. Had I known it, it was this much fun, I probably would have just skipped kids and went right to grandkids. But the grandkids are just extra into it, extra, extra fun. And crabbing is one of the few ways I've found that I can actually completely wear them out. I've had them laid on the bow, completely exhausted. It is really a great family-oriented event. I like going crabbing with my family because it's fun. Because I get to have fun and eat all of the crabs. Ooh, look at Beautiful! Get a good shot of that crab. While it is a competitive tournament, it's not, I wouldn't call it fiercely competitive. And so to be on the really big crabs, you almost need to have intimate daily knowledge of where they're moving, where they're at, what the water salinity is. The biggest males will always tend to be in an area of fresher water. And depending on the rainfall, it could be two miles down the creek, it could be all the way up by the parkway. We have marshals out on the water that help people from outside the area who may not know the water here to say, hey, you know, here's a good spot, try here or try there. Ron's the guy to go to and he doesn't give out too much information before the assault. So, you know, he will put you on crabs, but he might not put you on the winning crab. Uh, last year it was a funny moment when I pulled up to Ron and said, uh, I'm, ha I'm following you to see where you put your traps in. And he just looked at me and said, my traps are already in. And so I had to laugh and move on. No, I haven't won it yet. Uh, I, I've come close uh, a couple times, caught some decent sized crabs, but, uh, but I haven't caught that real big one yet. I've never won the assault, much to my chagrin. No, I've tried. <laughs> I think one year I came within like a quarter of an inch, but it's always just a day late and a dollar short, as they say. Now, I, I like to say that I graciously have allowed someone else to win it every year. I held back and, uh, and I have to admit that crab greed sets in and I would like to catch the biggest crab, but, but I focus it on catching what I can and getting in there and just eating all the crabs I can. You know, in 2014, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dennis Kleiner won the tournament. Uh, Dennis uh, isn't a crabber. 
He caught seven crabs. One of the crabs he caught happened to be the biggest crab caught that day. Uh, and his name's on the tournament trophy as a result. You know, I, I often describe that as even a blind squirrel can find a nut. Uh, and Dennis is proof of that. A gentleman from Cape May Courthouse by the name of Sean Bullifant. Uh, Sean actually came in after the deadline uh, in 2013. Uh, he had the largest crab in 2013, but he came in after the deadline, so he was not deemed the winner. Uh, but he came back to win the tournament in 2015. I, for one, was very happy when he won the tournament. You know, part of me thinks that even if I do catch the really big one, I don't know that I want to uh, take that glory away from somebody else who might really want to do it. I'd love to see, uh, see a young kid pull that thing in, or if, if I had a young kid on my boat pull the big one in, I'd like to see him do that. In the Maryland and Delaware, people are funny. They, they think their Chesapeake crabs are the best crabs, and they come up here to try and show these South Jersey clam diggers, as they call them, how to catch crabs. And our guys seem to prevail. We still haven't had a Maryland winner yet. We've been very fortunate that we've gotten a lot of different people come to this event and try and win the big trophy. But this year, maybe the Maryland will pull through. Um, again, for me, it's not so much for the for the trophy or the bragging rights. It's really just to be out in the water and be part of it. All kidding aside, it's just an enjoyable time. You get to see people that you may chat with them or text with them all through the year, but you might only physically sit down and eat crabs with them once a year. A lot of us actually are good friends and we talk a lot on the internet. Uh, back and forth. We share our stories on Facebook, a Blue Crab Archives. But actually to sit down and break bread with a fellow crabber, just something about it. And that's kind of nice in today's environment, isn't it? To have like 1,300 people coming and just having a great time. You know, friends from Maryland, people from Virginia, people from out in Pennsylvania, they're not going to come together and, and, and get out. You know, we have great plans to do it, but that's a date that everybody marks on their calendar. And we'll start talking about it, you know, months in advance, especially as the winter is, uh, is wearing on all this and we'll start talking, hey, are we doing the, uh, we're doing the assault this year? We, you know, that's kind of the, the chatter that was going on uh, in the first couple of years. And then, you know, after I think four or five years, it was just expected that this was gonna happen. And if you know Ron, he will start sending out emails 364 days away. The day after the 2019 assault, the 2020 assault emails will go out. So that's how he is. So everybody knows, all right, I'm clearing this out, it's on my calendar, and we're going to be there. And this is really the highlight of the crabbing season for a lot of people out there now. And, you know, as more and more people find out about it, they're like, yeah, I want to be part of this. Uh, so I expect this is going to just continue to grow and grow. He's hooking. The mayor is a hooker. Pull, pull, pull. You got to pull, 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 pull. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. Oh, empty. Do we want to try one more? We can try one more, but we literally have like 32 seconds. 32 seconds. Um. By the way, no problem. I'm no not problem. leaving Summers Point a loser. Even if we don't do it on TV, we're going to catch a crab. We're getting crabs, Jen, yeah. without a doubt. <laughs> you can have this book. Right, Alex, you, you sh okay, here we go. Last oh, attempt. Yeah. Okay, don't we're going to see it. Don't fall in, don't Mayor. In. Here we go. Let's see. What we got? Did we get something? Hello! I'm one of the co-sponsors of the event with a bunch of other different organizations, but I'm also the master of ceremonies at the event. So I get to be there, have some fun, poke fun at Ron and all the other contestants. Our host, our benefactor, yeah. eh, Ron. Uh, you know, it's pretty incredible what this has grown into and what we've been able to do uh, with, the, with the funding, uh, for, you know, both for local kids and environmental cleanups and everything else that the Pat Con Creek Foundation does. The tournament's always been a free event, but because we were able to receive sponsorships from, from local and national sponsors, 
we started turning a, a profit at the event despite all the expense and despite the participants not paying. Uh, we decided in 2015 that, hey, you know, we have some overages here. Let's try to do something good with this money. And we formed a 501c3 uh, charitable organization called the Pat Con Creek Foundation. And we take those proceeds and we put them into youth education and environmental cleanup. People sometimes have a wrong stereotype of generalized outdoorsmen is that they take, they take, they take, they don't necessarily give. Everyone says, you know, this crab tournament may take a lot of crabs out of the creek. The number of crabs caught the, the weekend of the tournament is actually no different than the num number of crabs I catch in a single day on my boat. So it's zero impact on the crabs. Uh, we've, we've confirmed this with New Jersey Fish and Wildlife and their biologists. And then when I found out that it's all to do good things, the assault on Pacon Creek with the Pacon Creek Foundation and cleaning up the waterways, it's just fabulous. So why wouldn't, that's why we got involved. Crabs reproduce at a, a, at a huge rate and we're very fortunate that our waterways are so clean. And the, the river council that I'm the chairman of is the steward of the river and we have continuing data that our river is getting cleaner and cleaner every year as compared to other areas that are having problems and one of the reasons why we can tell that is the abundance of wildlife we have and the abundance of the crabs and the fish and our osprey population you know it, from that sense there's zero impact our organization is the organization cleaning up the creek, cleaning up debris that's out there. Uh, you know, we mechanized the annual cleanup that takes place. And until we got involved, you know, they would bring out trash bags. Now we bring out dumpster loads every, every May. You know, we're doing our part plus some and over and above some to maintain Pacon Creek and maintain the crab population there. You know, the crappers, on, in themselves look after the environment because that's what they rely on for the crowd. I mean, let's face it, if, if it's a rotten environment, it's the dirty environment out there, right, they're not going to go there. The crabs continue to reproduce and replace the crabs that are taken. So it's a win-win for the environment, the community, the business community, and the town itself. We also want to preserve Pacon Creek for uh, human enjoyment for uh, generations to come. What Ron did, he could have taken this thing and just just let it be uh, a party and just sustain itself. But instead, he wound up uh, really giving back to the community and putting a lot into um, you know into the things he does with the environment and the various cleanups that are being done and what he's done with the with the kids with the scholarships to the Sedge Island experience and now with the uh, the Seashore Science Center. It's just incredible and how this thing has grown out of this uh, this little crabbing tournament. These are the initiatives that we need to support. As a city, as a mayor, I'm totally behind them because I think it's the right way to go. And yes, I'm sure it will continue and grow because they keep doing more and more to protect the waterways and clean up the waterways and educate people. Mm -hmm. And that's really sharp. And about the plastic bags with the local supermarket, it's they're doing all the good stuff. Well, the new year means a new fee for people who shop in one South Jersey town. A five cent plastic bag fee will go into effect at all stores in Summers Point starting January 1st. Uh, much like the balloon ban, plastic bags are a problem to the environment, specifically marine life. We're providing the education piece for the stores to say this, this is in place because we're concerned about the environment. The five cent fee is enough of a deterrent that it reduces the use of those single use bags by about 85 percent. And the Pat Crown Creek Foundation is something that's right in my backyard. I can see the results. When they haul 20 bags of trash out of Tuckahoe Wildlife Management Area, that's a boots on the ground difference that I can get behind. And so if I donate a $100 cutting board or a $50 turkey call or whatever it may be, I know it all goes to a worthy cause. And that's something that I feel good about and I know it's gonna make a difference in my local communities. We at the Hurley in the Morning Charity are very, very pleased to help further your great work. And we are presenting Captain Ron Meischer, the chairman, the founder of the Pat Con Creek Foundation with a grant award of $3,500. Their heart's in the right place. The environmental initiatives, the education, the outreach, and, you know, on top of that, it's just a fun time. And this is my word, it just gets funner and funner.
you know, it's just it, it's amazing to just see the the effort and the and the production that this thing's become and the the great volunteers working working their hearts out to really put on a great show. You know, people come to this event and they they make memories here. Oh, absolutely a family event. I could go on my own. I, I do a lot of crabbing on my own just because family's so busy, but the assault is all about family for us. So I would encourage uh, family and friends to come out. Just don't try and crab in my spot. Every year it just gets a little bigger and a little better. Just the fact that we're here in year 10 is just remarkable to me. You know, we already see the, the things, the flourishion of, of what has started from just uh, a few people but they decided to get together and crab, morphed into the assault on a Pacom Creek crabbing tournament, which then turned into the Pacom Creek Foundation, which started the Seashore Science Center. What's next? So many times you've seen over the years that in an assault on Pacom Creek, fun fact is no Maryland crabber has ever won America's largest crabbing tournament. <laughs> Well, in our 10th anniversary, the drought has ended for the so-called Chesapeake Crab State. And this year's 2019 winners are Nathan Rice, Paul Kenzajewski, and Charles Bunky Bruff. From Rising Sun, Maryland. My girlfriend and I, we finished second the last three years by less than a quarter of an inch every year yeah there'll, no, there'll be no more negative comments from ron from about maryland look at that beauty that's a chester river crab all day long ron you put on a hell of an event here keep it up we love all your hard work we'll see you next year how did they go great perfect. they went great perfect i had a blast it was a great opportunity no, to no. eat as many crabs as i possibly could a lot of effort into it good job i want to thank you hey no we had a great time thank I'm you glad. so much Oh, where do I see the tournament in 2029? Televised live, probably, uh, or or on tape delay on uh, coming on at 3 a.m. on uh, ESPN, you know, seven. If, you know, assuming there's a seventh ESPN channel, then uh, you know I, I could see this getting picked up at some point uh, because there's a story to be told here. And Two, three. <laughs> You know, for me, there are memories made as kids where you go out with your parents or your grandparents and you go crabbing. And what I've seen over the years with this tournament, the families come down and I watch the kids grow up and they look forward to this weekend. As I'm leading up to the tournament and I'm tired and the tournament itself is, is a lot of work and I feel like I don't want to do it anymore, I go on the social media and the entire timeline is full of just smiling people who are enjoying themselves at the event. And we're able to raise some money and do some good with that money too. So all of that makes it, makes it worthwhile.